Welcome to another edition of Skills Update. By now, you already know that this platform is a marketplace for all information concerning skills development as required by individuals, corporate organizations, and Nigeria as a whole. This week, we will be looking at the construction sector and the efforts by the Industrial Training Fund to ensure that the best skills are on offer in this important sector. My name is Angela Jai. You're welcome. <music> If there is one sector where the need for good quality artisans is a major issue for individuals and corporate organizations alike, it is the construction sector. Many Nigerians have shared experiences of the ordeals in the hands of poorly skilled artisans who have made construction finishing a nightmare. The same job is often repeated due to wrong diagnosis or lack of technical know-how. Many Nigerians have had to go as far as neighboring countries to get good quality skills to end this nightmare. The good news is that this trend will soon be a thing of the past as the ITF under the current administration has finalized a competency strategy to correct this anomaly. Apart from the new training initiatives specifically directed at nurturing competent artisans and improving existing skills in the construction sector, the fund is for the first time in the history of Nigeria classifying artisans based on their skills and competency levels. The competency level is expected to determine the type of job an artisan should undertake. The ITF believes that when you overstretch an artisan or craftsman beyond his competency level, he will not be able to deliver the required standards. This informed the strategy being adopted to tackle the problem by ensuring that every artisan, craftsman or technician is trained to the highest level of competency in their chosen trade areas. For instance, the ITF has signed a Memorandum of Understanding with the Cement Technology Institute of Nigeria to train artisans in the areas of carpentry, bricklaying, tiling, plasterfarris, and everything that has to do with the use of cement for building and construction. Again, it is not just about acquiring a skill but also paying attention to details. This is why the ITF is ensuring the development of the right work attitude that will pave the way for perfection in chosen areas. Going forward, the fund will make information available to Nigerians on artisans who have the highest competency levels in different areas of building and construction. <laughs> Last week, we featured key stakeholders in the manufacturing sector on skills requirements in Nigeria and suggestions on how Nigeria can achieve a sound economy powered by the right skills. This week, we will take the analysis and suggestions of His Excellency, the Executive Governor of All Your State, Senator Abiola Ajimobi, and the Director General Standards Organization of Nigeria, Dr. Joseph Odumodu. Everybody talks about... Uh youth empowerment for me what is empowerment empowerment for me is information structured information structured information is education education is skill skill is ability ability is capability capability is empowerment your ability to earn a living your ability to be productive, your ability to contribute to the society, that to me is skill acquisition. And when I was a senator, the flagship of my project was skill acquisition. I established the largest skill acquisition center, which was named Ajimobi Vocational Center where we did a lot of training, where we did a lot of value addition, where we encouraged our people to be able to use their hands. If you go to developed countries, they have less of theoreticians, they have more of practical men, people who can use their hands to produce and develop. And I think to a large extent, that is what we need to do. In the Nigerian environment, youths, are about 64% of the total population. And the moment you don't have youth working and engage in productive development, you are opening the room for a set of uh, youth restiveness. 
So I believe Nigeria today should concentrate more on how to develop our youth. And it's been said severally, the devil finds work for idle hands. Once the youths are productively engaged, you reduce toggery, brigandage, and uh, youth uh, restiveness. It's not about just being a graduate, but being able to perform certain expert roles in industry. So what we need to do today to build a new economy in Nigeria is job creation. So we must focus on ensuring that even if, there, if need be, we must subsidize industries. America is subsidizing even the housing industry. We need to, and the auto industry. Nigeria should be able to subsidize, for example, the auto industry. We must promote the auto policy. Wonderful initiative, but we must make it to work because it has a multiplier effect on the economy in terms of skills, in terms of uh, specialization, in terms of even building, because there are over a thousand industries that are associated, you know, either into these auto parts or um, other um, textile and leather industries and others. So if, for example, government focuses on only the auto industry and ensures that, one, we, we make people who will buy, um, if, if, for example, the cheapest car in Nigeria is about 2.5 million, Nigeria can subsidize those and ensure that financing is available for those who, can, who have a proven record of being able to pay in such a way that we can promote made in Nigeria vehicles. It would create um, untold um, employment that would take our youth out of, out of the roads. And, and, and if we provide employment, the rest of Nigeria will be a piece. Because Nigerians are very smart people. They know what to do. All right, we will now take the concluding part of the skills update interview with the Director General IT of Dr. Mrs. Juliet Chikasanaiko in Washington, D.C., United States, on the phone's priority projects. We are not going to be, you know, buying things that our trainees can produce from outside. We order through the trainees so that way we're empowering them. Let's use their products. Even the souvenirs that have to be used in the organization should come from the trainees. Sometimes when you patronize them two, three times, they're able to raise enough capital to go into full production um, for other clients as well. So, but it, 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 there are so many ways. We just have to keep thinking outside the box. But beyond that, I'm hoping that um, the financial institutions can be yeah. equipped enough to be able to support the startup entrepreneurs because it's so important. They, they, they may be like high risk, but we just need to do that, provide some form of financial support to them so that we can encourage more of these entrepreneurs to come up. And that's the only way we can create more jobs for the, for the team in youth. Because one entrepreneur comes up and he's able to employ two, three people, you're creating jobs for other people. So, and we, we, we really want to encourage more of that. We also uh, partner with another agency now to see how we can also work they can guide the and, and trainees to be able to produce for exports, which I think is also very important. And it's a good way to raise um, capital, be able to assess some funding just to produce for export. And that way they can work as cooperatives as well. My desire in ITF is to help the government succeed at their policies and desire to empower the youth and create jobs. That is my focus and my desire. And we're working very hard at that. We're, we're, we have been very proactive in doing that. You know, we, I mean, I started a year ago when I came on board, really I couldn't place, um, I couldn't really get clear detail of how many IT was training every year. And I set a goal to say, no, we must train two million every year. Because then it was clear that what we're training was just just so low, you know, and that was to me was one first um, uh, goal, something we needed to achieve urgently, and I will also set a goal to automate the business process of ITF, everything that we're also doing right now, and it's critical because that's going to be like the structure, the pivot on which every other thing will revolve, you know, and then the strain of that two million was because we felt, look, if we don't do this. 
considering the number of youth that graduate every year from the universities, polytechnics, even the secondary schools, you know, and the number that already that are out there unemployed or underemployed, the unemployment rate will just continue to grow at a very high rate. So we felt, okay, you no, know, two million minimum. But right now, we're even increasing that number. You know, I've told my team we should look at even training and working on getting jobs for even 50% of 4 million people to be trained. You know, and that's because the need is huge. The government really desire to create jobs for so many people. And government is about skill. We can't just be doing it in thousands, you know. It must be in millions to be able to impact people because Nigeria is a huge country. And the unemployment level we know is high. The number of those living below poverty line, wow, it's already, it's also very huge. And we, we just needed to scale up that. And But to do that, we can't do it alone, really. It's almost impossible. So it's all about collaborations. It's about collaborating with, um, with uh, other agencies, international organizations, and also thinking outside the box as much as possible. Right now, we're engaging more of the youth to think of the solutions, to work out solutions, to help us identify their needs, how we can you know, better address their needs, because they know their problems more than we do. Yeah, and I've worked with them to carry out some feasibility studies on some trade areas that are emerging and that they're excited about, they want to do. And we want to build capacity in those trade areas. And these are exportable skills because we're not just training for the Nigerian industries. We believe that when the youth are empowered and they want to go to Europe, US, Asia, wherever, they should go well skilled, ready to add value to that society. I'm actually happy each time I travel out and I hear that, oh, Nigerians are doing very well. The, the best scientists here are Nigerians, the best historians, everything. You hear that a lot, even in the U.S. You know, our people are making them part, and we want to continue to do that. We don't want them to go out there and they, are, they become a nuisance to the society. We don't want, and then we know we can't keep all of them back here. The Nigerians love to travel. Nigerians are adventurers. But we want them to go there well-equipped. To offer services. Some are migrating to Canada. What skills are they going with? Right now, Canada requires technical, vocational, skilled workforce. I think this year they're looking at about 300,000, and we need to build that capacity. We empower them to go out there and add value to the society. That way, you're creating jobs wherever they go. And in Nigeria, also, we, we're doing that. We're building the internal capacity. So, my focus is that ITF should really be well positioned to deliver effectively and efficiently on his mandate, which is to, to build indigenous capacity sufficient to meet the needs of the industry, both in the public and the private sectors of the economy. And you know, when you say to sufficient, when you say sufficiency, it means millions. So we have, to, we have to do a whole lot more. And internally, we have been re-engineering the processes because we need internal efficiency to be able to drive this goal, the mandate we're looking at. And then I also want to see an ITF that this government will see as a very critical partner in their uh, desire to create jobs, to industrialize the country. Because it's all about the head knowledge. We're not looking at the, 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 the natural resources. Right now, it's about the um, human resource. Because if you don't have the right people, if you don't empower people, enlighten them, educate them enough to know how to develop the natural resources, then the natural resources are just basically useless. You know? So that's why we're focusing a whole lot in building the human capacity. Because when we have the quality workforce, we can be sure that Nigerian products will become globally competitive. Because you can't give what you don't, ha you don't have. And that's why we, we are really driving up the numbers. And then we are reaching out, collaborating. You know, I'm sure ITF has never really uh, been as aggressive as it is right now. We're reaching out a lot. And we are, we are also working on, you know, evolving a, um, hundreds of satellite training facilities. Maybe not, not owned by ITF, but that we, are part, we can collaborate with to train more youth. You know, these are some of the legacies I would love to leave behind to leave an ITF that's world class, truly, and, and, and it's well positioned to drive industrialization in Nigeria. I want to see an ITF that's well positioned to deliver effectively on the agenda of the current present governments, which is especially in the area of job creation, in boosting the economy of the country, you know, economic development, job creation. I believe that ITF is the uh, is there and with the mandate we have it's our responsibility to drive that agenda and to make sure the government succeeds 
in creating jobs for the millions of youth that are out there. <music> Biggest challenge I see is usually in getting people to change the way they do things. I mean, we have a group of people who are used to doing things a certain way, and you know that continuing in that way would not help achieve the desired result. You want to have a change. You want people, you want more like a paradigm shift. You want to bring new innovative ways of doing things to a system. It's usually, the, I think the biggest challenge, you know, is always with the people. But, you know, it's, that's where it comes to selling, being able to sell the ideas and then also let them see the vision. Where are we headed? And I think once people see that, they can, they can buy in. So it, the initial time, it was really helping, getting them to see why we needed to set these huge goals and, and why we needed to, you know, change the way we've been doing things previously and, and, and go in, uh, use a different approach to, to proceed. So I, I, I saw that as um, one critical challenge, but right now I think we, it's been, it, it has worked out very well and we're still on that uh, journey towards the destination that we desire. Mm -hmm. It had to do with the experience I had last year when I visited our staff school in Jos, and then what I saw. I was just um, about two months old and I felt I needed to do a thorough inspection of the um, school facility and what I saw I, I didn't like. And instantly I, I felt there was an urgent need to work out an improvement plan for the school. But then you know, that plan, I mean, faced a major resistance. It was like, oh, the world was going to come to an end because, you know, I had the union and a few others teaming up to say, no, no, nothing should happen to the school. And all we planned for the school was actually to develop the school, to reposition it for, to be the model school it was originally set up to be. You know, and I saw myself and the team walking through the weekend to install two boreholes, to transform the toilets, to rework everything from, you know, Saturdays, Sundays. People had to bring in their personal money to just make sure that happened, you know. So we went against all odds to ensure that the transformation we needed happened and within a very short time. And then we also had the teachers moved out for a, an intensive training program to prepare them to drive the new curriculum of the federal government, uh, the Ministry of Education. And I saw that as one challenge, and I was almost discouraged because I'm like, well, this was we're planning this for the good of the of the children of the people, and I expected a thank you and not any form of resistance. But you know that's human nature. I think after a while, when they realized where I was headed and why that had to be done urgently. That's a lot of them came back to um, apologize and also uh, appreciate me for that um, um, perseverance and for the determination to bring improvement and transformation for the school. And my biggest joy right now is actually the, the relief uh, we brought f uh, to the children and the fact that they, ha they have a more conducive environment to learn. And we have also concluded a um, three years improvement plan for the school and for the teachers as well, which I, I believe will implement over time. And at the end of the day, I think the school, the children and the community in Jos will be all the better for it. Now let's take a look at some of the exciting activities of the fund this week. The Industrial Training Fund has achieved over 70% job placement for its trainees across major sectors of the Nigerian economy. The Director General of ITF, Dr. Mrs. Juliet Chikazanaiko, said that ITF's focus was to ensure 100% employment for trainees that had benefited from the various trainings conducted in collaboration with the Nigeria Employers Consultative Association and other organizations. The DG spoke in Washington, D.C., United States, while briefing stakeholders on the ITF NECA collaboration.
Over 74,000 Nigerians have been trained in various vocational and technical areas under the 1,000 per state training scheme, while about 1 million benefited from the overall ITF training projects in-house and across industries in the last one year. The DG's earlier statement on this feat is corroborated by the project director, ITF NECA Technical Skills Development Project, Mrs. Helen Jemerigi, in this group interview. For employment in industry, and we have uh, data to show that a number of them, that most of the ones that we have trained over the six years, have been employed by the industry, and some of them have also been assisted to set up their businesses along the areas that they have been uh, equipped in. So we have some of them running auto mechanic workshops. We have some of them running welding uh, workshops, and they employ a few people to work with them. And the, the decision to also move into the agri sector and the garment uh, technician area is also in the pursuit of uh, self-employment because those ones invariably uh, are likely to end up either working for themselves or working for established uh, organizations. No, let's look at the skills, vocational training. Do we really have enough skilled manpower? This country. As a country, yeah. no, we don't. Like I said, before the project even kicked off, we undertook the manpower requirements okay. of the Nigerian economy for skilled manpower. And that survey, the findings indicated that we lacked indigenous technical manpower in the areas of building construction. As I, you agree with me, we rely on neighboring countries for artisans in the building construction sector. If you want ties laid in a straight line, you want your plumbing done without your house being flooded, you have to get uh, plumbers and tilers from uh, Ghana or Kutonu or uh, along our neighboring uh, countries. If you use Nigerians, you could compare the results. You will discover that it cannot be as neat as what those foreign technicians uh, would produce. And in the areas of uh, even auto mechanics, the vehicles we have today require a different type of auto maintenance skills than the ones we used 20, 30 years ago. So that's why you find some vehicles will break down and they can't easily find a mechanic to help them work on them. So we are also using Kujo Automobile in uh, Kaduna and Truck Masters here at Orego to train technicians in the modern type of vehicles. Skills Update interviewed some of the trainees under the ITF NECA Skills Development Project at the Abuja Skills Training Center. Like some others that have been interviewed on this program, the trainees are confident that the future can only be very bright. It's a, a real privilege uh, to be here alongside my colleagues. Uh, we are here, as you all know, to partake in this very uh, training and I think it's it's a very nice institute uh, where I've been taught uh, so many different courses and uh, which by the special grace of God after living here will use the skills we've learned to benefit ourselves and indeed the whole nation as well well I think I, I've gained a lot I've gained a lot uh, a lot of knowledge I would say I was, uh, I'm a totally different person compared to the one who came here in the first instance. I have learned a lot, a lot. I feel good being part of the, of the MSTC trainees, ITF, because actually it's a nice program we're having here. And secondly, it's one of the best uh, institutions in West Africa that I've ever been to. Because this is where you have uh, the real life uh, practicals. This is where you have the real life practicals and the real life uh, equipment. As you can see, there we have the router which we actually use in our configurations and some other things were being introduced to in real life, not just a visual thing. I have gained a lot. When I mean a lot, I have gained a lot in terms of uh, networking, 
in terms of uh, Java programming, I have gained a lot. In terms of uh, knowing the, the the security performance in our network today, I have. That's when you're going uh, in, uh, more advanced in the networking protocols, in ICT especially, like knowing the Cisco devices, knowing how the Cisco iOS actually propagate different types of networking securities. I have gained a lot in terms of networking and Java programming. When it comes to programming, I have gained a lot when you are using some of the uh, programs in writing your application to, for, for, the, for the programs with platform independence. Platform independence simply means it can run on any platform, be it an iOS, uh, uh, an iOS which is the Apple, or be it a, a Windows, a Linux, or Kelly Linux, or any operating system. Thank you. Well, I think I would say I've um, really gained a lot from the training. Because before the whole training started, I always had this, this dream to build myself in the computer world. So since I started training, I can really say confidently that I've gained a lot towards the achievement of the initial dream I had. And I would say I've stayed gaining already because, like I said earlier, I, I had this dream to be good or build my or to build myself in this field from the little I know I've learned. I think in the outside world right now, commercially, I could say there are things I'm doing for people that they appreciate in return. You know, so I would say it's a very good program so far. It's been an exciting time with you today on Skills Update. Please send in your inquiries about any aspect of industrial training for and activities to Skills Update at weeklywritengee.com. For advert placements, you can contact the Skills Update team via info at weeklywritengee.com. We'll via the number plus 234-8136-531089. But then it's text only. My name is Angela. Thanks for watching and see you again next week. <laughs>